Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of our favorite longest running series ever for this community, Back to Basics. Hooray! I think, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. This is going to be episode 48, so we're getting close to our 50th episode. Whew, God, I can't believe we've been going on for that long. I can. I've heard you talk. <laughs> but um. Oh, are you kidding? It seems like that long if I'm just talking for like five minutes. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to be digging into the two halves of Genesis chapter 32. The, today we're going to do the first half, which is uh, Jacob having left uh, the, uh, shall we say, toxic environment of Laban, uh, decides it's probably a good idea to reconcile with his brother. So we're going to deal with that today. And then after that, uh, we're going to take a break. And then next week, you're going to get to see us tackle. Um, but let's just say some of the some of the first true uh, sports edutainment in uh, biblical history. All right. So for today, we're going to start with Genesis chapter 32. Uh, there's a two-verse little lead-in that more relates to the last chapter. We'll talk about it, but briefly, and then we're going to get into the passage itself. Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 to 21. Uh, I'm going to read from the NRSVUE uh, for now, but for the rest of the passage, I'm going to be working off of my usual Robert Alters translation, because it's better fight me. Let's go. Uh, Genesis chapter 32. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. So he called that place Mahanaim. That's it. Jacob sends presents to appease Esau. This is where the, the meat of the chapter begins properly from verse 3. Jacob sent messengers before him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them, Thus you shall say to my lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob, I have lived with Laban as an alien and stayed until now, and I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male and female slaves, and I have sent to tell my lord in order that I may find favor in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he's coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly what afraid. Saying? What? Yes. Makes it sound like an attack force is coming rather than just, look, I got stuff. I made it. Yeah, well, that is that is the supposition. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so he's coming to meet you and 400 men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two companies, thinking, if Esau comes to the one company and destroys it, then the company that is left will escape. Good tactics. And Jacob said, O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O oh Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, the mothers with the children. Yet you have said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. So he spent that night there, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 millich camels and their colts, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. These he delivered into the hand of his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, pass on ahead of me and put a space between drove and drove. He instructed the one in the lead, when Esau, my brother, meets you and asks, to whom do you belong? Where are you going? And whose are these ahead of you? You shall say, these belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present sent to my lord Esau, and moreover, he is behind us. He likewise instructed the second and the third and all who follow the droves. You shall say the same thing to Esau when you meet him, and you shall say, moreover, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he thought, I may appease him with the present that goes ahead of me, and afterwards I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed on ahead of him, and he himself spent the night in the camp. That's it. It's a cliffhanger. Um, 
a lot of specificity about the the livestock, but I guess that's just sort of driving the point home. And it's kind of par um, for the course at this point. You know, that's how the how the Bible doth tell a story. This feels a little paranoid. A little bit. And again. A little bit. But then again, this is like as any of us who are parents know, like this is this is the paranoia of a kid who knows he done fucked up. <laughs> like he knows what he did. So paranoia, yes, but kind of a knowing paranoia. Like, yeah, there is a not insignificant chance that he's out to do some serious damage, and I don't blame him. You know, I got I got mine living with Laban, but oh crap, I still owe him something fierce. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Um <laughs> just the messengers like how is that the message that you pass on what do you mean <laughs> like, he's got he's not coming he's got 400 dudes with him when he said when <laughs> when he's like you know i'm looking for favor in your sight <laughs> yeah yeah and this is i i want to talk about literary construction here a little bit which is something i don't talk about a lot because honestly most of the old testament's pretty just straightforward narrative but mm -hmm. the next, this one and the next two stories do something that is really interesting. And we don't often see in the Old Testament. We see the New Testament a lot. Um, it's kind of, a, it's what's called an interpolated pericope. Um, big ass word, you don't even know what that means. Fancy. But, um, well, what one of my teachers back at seminary liked to call it was a Mark and sandwich because the Gospel of Mark loves to do this shit all the time, where you start one story and then halfway in the middle of it, you stop and tell a completely different story and then you finish the other story. So we get this uh, in Mark with the story of the bleeding woman that happened, the woman who's been bleeding for like her whole life and has touched the hem of his garment and all that. And that one pops up in the middle of the death and resurrection of Lazarus. So, like, the story starts, and then he's like, oh, no, wait, I got to deal with this shit. And then when that's done, he's like, oh, and by the way, Lazarus died while you were dealing with this other stuff. So, like, this concept of a of a, a mark and sandwich, a story occurring inside another story, is very much a New Testament thing. So it's really kind of cool to see it happen in the Old Testament here. Now, since we're just looking at the first part of the sandwich, we don't see it, but we have this section here. Then we have... Uh, the next section, which is where Jacob wrestles at Peniel, um, and that's that's going to be a fun one to talk about. We're going to talk about that in the next episode. And then it concludes when Jacob and Esau actually meet in chapter 33. So in terms of literary structure, it's like, I don't know that it's telling anything specific other than that, like, the ancient Hebrews are developing their dramatic flair, and it's kind of cool. But it's still, it's kind of cool to me. Like this, this structure is way ahead of its time and it's really cool that way. And I'm just geeking out about the literary structure. Okay, I've ranted. Let's continue. <laughs> um, I just, I don't, I don't, I'm having a hard time finding a whole lot to talk about apart from like, apart from that. From it seeming, at least to me, like a wildly misleading message was given. Well, I don't know if it's wildly misleading. Um, like he is coming with like uh, i'll i'll read you chapter 33 verse 1 which is when jacob and esau meet and it says now jacob looked up and saw esau coming and 400 men with him it's not misleading <laughs> esau's rocking up with 400 dudes so yeah yeah just so, it's it, it it maybe just to a modern mind it reads mm -hmm. like the intention was different than the message that was delivered <laughs> Well, like, because we're we're used to deceptive narrative tropes, which is kind of how Western storytelling is now. Um, didn't always used to be like American TV is fucking good at this now, but we didn't always used to be this way. But yeah, a lot of our narrative tropes modernly are like, hey, look, this is about to happen. This is about to happen. Look out for the thing that's about to happen. Ah, you thought the thing was going to happen. Um, so that is, um, you know, a, a modern thing for us. But that wasn't a common thing in these days. So that kind of narrative deception. Uh, and whether this qualifies as narrative deception or not, you'll have to stay tuned for the next two episodes to find out, because I'm not telling. Anyway, um, look at it, though, and this is the way I like to look at it. We'll set the narrative stuff aside for a minute. I think it's interesting to look at this in terms of the the emotions of the people present. So you you hit it on, uh, you hit on 
uh, Jacob kind of having a very strong reaction to to SL coming on. Um, and we know, because I gave you the first verse of 33, that SL is... Like it's it's not a lie. The messenger didn't fuck up. S.O. is coming and coming, but strong. Uh, so he's got a very intense reaction happening too. They're both having intense reactions to each other. Um, I have not had the occasion to do this, but I have heard stories of those who have. Um, dear listener slash viewer, you ever bump into a high school bully of yours years, years, years down the road? Like there's a part of you that wants to come on strong, whether or not they're they're fixing to apologize for their bullshit or not. Like, I'll be honest, my high school bullies ain't, ain't ever said shit to me since, but I have heard tell that this is a thing what happens. Um, or And really anybody who does you wrong, but like you have a conflict with someone and that first meeting with them after the fact, like you got 400 dudes at your back, you're, you're gonna rock up with them, right? Like, you know, this guy screwed you over. You're, whether you mean to apologize or not, that the running into a high school bully thing is just making me think of a of a song called Jimmy. Uh, I suppose, but yes, <laughs> yeah. I uh, so because what we have here is a conflictive relationship. Like they they're both fucking pissed at each other, and not for wrong reason. And whether like Jacob here, to his credit. He came out of his time with Laban and he's like, okay, that sucked. Like, majorly sucked. This guy fucked me over for years and years just because he could. And uh, hang on. I did that before I went to Laban. I went to Laban because I did that to somebody. Oh, shit. I should probably fix that. Like, the, the act of self-reflection that occurs here on Jacob's part is... Let's be honest, in the lineage of, of biblical heroes that precede him, kind of unique, right? Like, we don't see this level of self-reflection very often in our biblical heroes so far. Uh, would that Abraham demonstrated similar reflective prowess. So, like, there are good things happening here. It's a straightforward passage, but sure. Um... It's also something to talk about, too, the the interplay between openness and caution. Like, he knows he's being called to be reflective and to be open and to be honest, but he's also extremely scared and paranoid even and defensive. Uh, and so these things are coexisting. It's like, I know I have to do the thing, but also I'm being terrified of it. What do you think about that? I think that's probably accurate. Yeah, it's um, very human. I'm just having a hard time having much to say about this one. Yeah, it is. A, it is a straightforward passage, and you know what? Straightforward passages are few and far between with this book, and it's nice to have them from time to time. Like this is Jacob, and I I love it for this because this is Jacob behaving in a thoroughly human manner, and that like keep in mind that. What was it only like two passages ago? We had under threat, so therefore invented genetics. Like that, that that's an unexpected reaction to a to a normal situation. This is a very normal reaction to a normal situation. Uh it, it that said though, uh Jacob, Jacob's really creative <laughs> in this the his problem solving. Yeah, yeah. Like setting aside the line of presence. Yeah. And he keeps coming, he keeps hitting the presents, so by the time he gets to me, he's not mad. Yeah. Like what, what what my theory presupposes is maybe enough presents will calm his ass down. Um, but it's not just that, like the, the creativity of dividing his group into two and say, well, if they if they if he wrecks up one, he might not find the other. Like there is some real tactical, creative yeah. tactical thinking happening here. Yeah, uh, there really which, is. You know, is good like it's it's also a sign too and this is something we don't talk about very much even modernly but like what he went through with Laban was traumatic like his trust and his let's be honest fucking oblivious nature was pretty heavily abused uh so he's not here we see a different Jacob than we saw when he was you know given random girl on wedding night and just kind of started plowing her before he realized who it was um 
This is almost a different guy. His his forethought, his preparation, his awareness is present here and was not present in the past. And that is, you know, there are a lot of negative things that come out of trauma. But there's a certain knack for preparation and, and situational awareness that can be developed and honed through trauma as well. Like we compliment him on his tactics, but it's also a trauma indicator too. Like he's, he, he's this tactical and creative because he's seen some shit. For those of you listening on the podcast, you can't see Courtney's facial expression right now, but she's got a definitive look like she wants to say something. Ugh, I just, I, I I hesitate to to go down the trauma makes you stronger path because like, no, trauma makes you scared. Like, you know, it makes you, you know, hyper aware and in being hyper aware all the time is not it's not good for you no it's not and you're you're right about that and i think there's a process that we're kind of short shifting in this discussion too and i say we but because it's mostly me because i'm the only one talking for the most part because i'm the ranter here but um there's a process of awareness when we're handling trauma where we recognize that our hyper vigilance and stuff like that are not healthy traits and as we learn to address them, we still maintain an ability to think in ways we didn't have before. And we can eventually process that trauma to a point where we've we've become strong. It's possible to get to a point where you, you keep the good shit and lose the exactly. bullshit. Exactly. You know? now, I'm not saying that's where Jacob is. Um, this kind of hair trigger, freak out, divide my camp, multiple tactics, uh, send presence. Oh, God, don't fucking kill me. Does not exactly speak of mental health. Uh, <laughs> It does kind of scream hypervigilance, which is why I specifically was right. like, <laughs> right. you know, I don't think he's there yet. And, you know, uh, as a little bit of epic foreshadowing, he goes here, he goes from hypervigilant against Esau to fist fight with a fucking angel in the next chapter. Like dudes all over the place. So I'm not going to claim that he's done the awareness that he's kind of been through ancient middle eastern equivalent of therapy and is in a good healthy mental spot he's clearly not but it's also worth recognizing too that even in traumatic moments i'm not going to say trauma makes you stronger that's a bit pat but it is worth recognizing that even the the unhealthy responses to trauma can manifest themselves in ways that are at least occasionally or situationally helpful uh, and that i think is kind of what we're dealing with here and in a certain sense, like that trauma response is not healthy, but it's also making him receptive to an act of reconciliation that he might not otherwise be ready for. Um, and there is, this is, uh, I know people who have traumatic struggles are going to are gonna struggle with me saying this, and obviously I have my own traumatic struggle, so I struggle saying it, but there is a certain element of God working in trauma that this represents. Uh, I'm not saying trauma is preordained. I'm not saying our suffering is required. But when it happens, there are ways that God can work through it, through it for the better. And this may well be one of them. Fair enough. Well, carefully and correctly stated. <laughs> yeah, I do want to be careful about that because like, I've been through some shit. You've been through shit. And I'm pretty sure that anybody who's gotten far enough to be watching our videos probably been through a few little bits of shit themselves. Yeah. You know, there, there's a there's an old saying, and I I've I, I'm quoting a requote of a quoted Reddit text of an author whose name I don't remember. Um, but there is a there is an old saying that there is no such thing as a sane human being. Um, and I think there's some real truth to that that I always try to be respectful of. In any case, I think we've kind of gotten to the end for this passage. Not much more to say about it. Uh, you got anything else you want to throw at the wall, or shall we? Uh, roll out with a uh, a fun warning for everybody for the next episode warning warning yes the next like episode three warning what you mean like a three minute warning something like that the next episode uh may involve a wrestling match so i my warning to you all is you're going to watch courtney our dedicated wrestling fan completely lose her shit in the next episode it's gonna be so much fun for her so, so you're overselling it now. There's no way it can possibly pay off. We are talking about wrestling, right? Like, isn't that the whole deal? Do not <laughs> presume to tell me about the art. <laughs> <laughs>
That's fair. I will no more lecture you on wrestling than you than one would expect you to lecture me on Star Trek. We all have our things. All right. So that being the case, we're going to go ahead and call things to an end for today. Uh, as usual, um, for the love of God, join us on Discord, man. Like, man, woman, yeah. child, and, every, and that whole rainbow of colors in between. Come join us where we are at. Like, videos are fun, man, but it's even funner when you can yell back at us, or at least all caps back at us. Anyway, Discord server, links down below. Come join us. It's friggin' awesome, I promise. Uh, and if I'm wrong about that, well, what are you going to do? It's online. Yell at me? Whatever. Personally, that I think it's a great default. Place. I, I do I do like it. Uh and I'm not at all biased in saying so. Um, so that that said, uh links to that is down in the description. We've got a boatload of stuff popping off now. We've got our monthly worship service that is a thing what's happening. Uh that is my tech skills are slowly getting better at that. We had audio for the last one, although it was a bit glitchy, but we're we're working on it. We are working on it. Streaming is kind of fun to figure out. But we've got our Bible study that's happening every month as well. Uh, we're tearing through the book of Revelation. Come join us for that. It's a hoot. Um, and yeah, lots of other stuff too. So all of that's down at the website, which is linked down below. So have a peep. Uh, and then hopefully we will see you on the next episode of Back to Basics in five minutes for us and about five, six days for you. Bye. <laughs> Wait, why Karen's crime? <laughs> <laughs>